Hello again. For this little bonus video, I, I thought we could take a look at some of the stuff that appeared in the last couple of episodes, that's these ones here, and, uh, and see what else we can use them for. So, probably the most obvious thing to do is to take one of the cave tiles from episode 8, cut a hole in the middle, like we did when making the pools, but rather than gluing the water texture underneath, we'll use the lava texture instead. And I've tried to cut this piece so that the lava grid lines up with the cave grid, so something like this. So I'll just apply some glue around the underside of the hole and glue the lava into place, making sure that the grid lines up, and, uh, and there you go. That's how it should look. But to make this one look a bit more interesting, uh, I'm also going to add a few stalagmites. And you can see how I made these back in episode 9, and uh, I'll just fix those into place with the trusty glue stick. So it's pretty straightforward stuff, and this is how it should look when it's all done. And, uh, and yeah, I'm probably going to end up making a few of these. Okay then, before I start on the next piece, I do just want to quickly mention that when making the dungeon tiles, I mostly use this texture for the walls, and cut that into half inch wide strips. Um, that's something I've done right from the very beginning. However, I think that the floor texture from the lava tiles, um, I think that could also double as a wall texture, you know, if you're not a fan of the original one. So here's a room that I've made with the floorboards as the base, and the stone texture from the lava tiles as the wall, and uh, here's the last piece of that wall that still needs to be glued into place. So uh, I'll just quickly do that now. And there you go. I, I personally think it doesn't look too bad. Anyway, to, to make this one look a little bit more lived in, I, uh, I'm going to add a rug. So I'll just apply some glue to the back as normal, and then glue that into place, though I am kind of squeezing bits together here and there just to add a few creases, um, so that it doesn't sit entirely flat. And that's that done. There's a nice little room with walls that are made from smooth stone blocks. Right then, this last part isn't really a tutorial or anything, but remember the dungeon in a box that I made a while back? Well, I kind of got a bit obsessed with the idea, and I've scaled it down even more to make a little encounter in a box kind of thing. And I've managed to cram it all inside one of those small postal boxes, um, the sort of thing that's small enough to fit inside the letterbox. Anyway, the, the idea for my own little encounter box is, well, let's assume that someone has shown an interest in playing RPGs, but they, they don't really want to commit to a full session with a whole group of experienced players, because, you know, what we do can seem a little bit weird at first, uh, let's be honest. So, my own box is just a very brief encounter that can be run one-on-one, -on -one just to introduce the player to some of the main game mechanics. So, uh, let's take a look inside. Right then, for the player, there's a pre-made character, a little miniature, a set of dice, we'll probably need those, and uh, a little healing potion of sorts, as I don't really want to kill their character in the first room. And uh, if at the end of the scenario they seem really keen to play a proper game, then I'd probably give them all of these things to keep, you know, as a little welcome to the hobby gift. Anyway, for the GM, that would be me, um, I've got a page of notes, a separate sheet for the monster stats, which just so happens to be this little fella here, and uh, I'll be doing a video on how I make these in a future episode, just so you know. Anyway, there's also a handout version of the kind of rock-paper-scissors puzzle that I've mentioned in a previous video. Okay, the last things in the box are all the terrain pieces, which you can see here. And uh, here I am, piecing all of those together. There you go. So yeah, the idea isn't really me saying go out and build this specific encounter, but rather this is the kind of thing that you can squeeze into a tiny little box. Um, just something that's small enough to fit inside the glove box, or that lives in the bottom of your backpack, or, or whatever. Though I have to admit that I do quite like the idea of making a whole dungeon in this fashion, um, with each encounter being stored in a different box. Um, I don't know, do you think that could work? I think that could work. Anyway. I think I've talked for long enough. Uh, I don't know how useful this one was, but as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.